guys, welcome back to day three of Seven Days of Sunscreen. Super excited to bring you today's review, which is gonna be on the Kosar X Aloe Soothing Sun Cream SPF 50 plus plus plus. So just to recap, my sunscreen reviews follow a certain criteria and that's how I do my ratings. So it's going to go based on ease of application, how it wears under makeup, white cast, yes or no, sophistication of formula, and then who I would recommend the product for. So without further ado, let's get into the demo. I'll throw on this product, throw on a little makeup, do a check-in, and then give you my overall thoughts. Hello, you are all zoomed in to the face and you know the drill. We're gonna apply this sunscreen. I'm gonna do the four finger test. It's actually the three finger test. I did wanna say that. I just love to add my pinky just cause I get like a little extra on there. So this is what the product looks like. The texture is pretty rich. It kind of reminds me of a typical moisturizer. It feels very hydrating and moisturizing. And I think it's because of the glycerin in here. It's just quite intense. It also has some vitamin E and snail secretion, which is a K-beauty staple for brightening and pigmentation. This does have some interesting ingredients. It does have that aloe base, but I do want to say when looking at the ingredient list that this may not be for everyone because it contains alcohol and not the good kind. Alcohol is the second ingredient in the list. Now, have I noticed a drying effect from this sunscreen? No, I have not. I think it kind of depends where your skin is at. Oftentimes, alcohol is used in products to kind of aid in absorption of ingredients. So it really does help with absorption of ingredients. That's why brands use alcohol. Brands aren't out to get you or out to create dryness usually. So alcohol and silicone are used as bases to kind of help pull ingredients into the skin. I know it's typical of certain sunscreens to have a higher alcohol content because of the way that the sunscreen is formulated. Now this does contain panthenol, hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, pentylene glycol, and these are all emollients and humectants. So I think that they try to offset that in the formula. But that being said, that is something to note. The other thing to note is that this is not fragrance free, so it has an aloe base, but it does have a couple of essential oils. They are further down the ingredient list, that's what I like to see. I don't like to see essential oils high up on the ingredient list, you, know, you guys know I hate essential oils. I didn't know that it had essential oils in the formula, and I don't know if I would have bought it, just because I am so sensitive to essential oils, but this has been pretty successful because I have not had any kind of dermatitis or any kind of irritation so far. So I do think it is a pretty good formula. I wish it was essential oil and fragrance free, but if you're not particularly sensitive to fragrance, then this is a great option. So you may notice that the sunscreen has already blended into the skin, and that is because this is a hybrid sunscreen. This is not just a mineral sunscreen, even though on some websites it's listed as just a physical sunscreen, that is because it contains chemical filters that are not approved by the FDA in the US yet because they're very new and we haven't tested them here. However, those are approved in Japan and Europe and Korea. So it's a combination sunscreen. It has titanium dioxide and then a few new filters that I'm going to list here that are more photostable. So they're supposed to be less sensitizing to very sensitive skin types than typical sunscreen filters. All right, now I'm going to do a quick little zoom in, do my makeup and come on back and tell you my final thoughts after having used this product for a couple of weeks. Hello, I am back. I just did my full face of makeup and I'm going to do a zoom in and show you how everything is wearing. Oh. 
All right, now on to my full thoughts and review. So for ease of application, I would give this product a solid eight out of 10. I don't know if everybody would love the thick, thick texture. I think oily skin would probably wanna stay away from this. But for me, because it's a combination sunscreen and it's not only physical, it's also chemical, I found that it blended into the skin really easily, just like a moisturizer. It spread easily, it dried quickly, and the white cast dissipated almost immediately, which is really all you can ask for. So for application under makeup, I would rate this a solid 9 out of 10. For my skin type, which is more on the dry side, I found that the emollient hydrating formula was just exactly what I like before I'm gonna apply foundation. It wasn't glowy though, so if you're looking for hydrating plus glowy, I would go with something else. But I really did enjoy how rich and spreadable the formula was, and I didn't find that any of my products clung over the sunscreen, which was also a really nice benefit. And for formula, I'm kind of split down the middle. I would give this a six. The reason I'm gonna give this a six is because I think that only dry and normal skin types are gonna like this. I think if you have oil on your face, you're not gonna love the feeling of something this hydrating and rich over the face. Additionally, if you are very sensitive, you may wanna steer away from it because of the fragrance and the alcohol present in the formula. Personally, I didn't have a problem with this, but I do wanna say that this is where marketing gets tricky and you have to do your research because something that markets itself as aloe and soothing and then has fragrance as well as alcohol as a second ingredient, that can be a little misleading. So if you're sensitive, I always suggest you patch test. But if you're not sensitive to alcohol and you don't mind fragrance in your products, it is a great formula. I did like how it was hydrating. I did think some of the ingredients like the hyaluronic acid and the snail secretion, etc., were kind of listed at the bottom. Would have loved for those to be higher up the ingredient list and the essential oils to be at the very bottom for it to get higher marks. That being said, I also liked the fact that it was a blend of both physical and chemical and that the chemical filters used are more sophisticated and are more photostable than traditional ones that we see here in the US. For white cast, I'm gonna have to give this product a good rating for me. I did not notice anything weird on my skin. Do you think that this is more on the safe end because it is a combination sunscreen, whereas if it were purely mineral, I may have some doubts about the white cast. And lastly, for price point, you're getting 1.69 fluid ounces, which is a good amount of sunscreen. It's a standard amount. I've also seen it on sale on Yes Style for $11, and you can use my discount code, which is at the bottom, Sarah Palmira, for a percentage off if you want to, but I've seen it at a good price, and I think the price point is actually really competitive with some drugstore products. So for price point, I have to give it to them. I think it's a 10 out of 10. So who is this good for? I don't know if I'd recommend it to anyone with oily skin as I think it could feel really heavy. I'd recommend this for somebody who wants a heavier feeling sunscreen with no white cast and you're not sensitive to fragrance or alcohol in certain formulas. I do like the feel of this sunscreen so I'm going to keep using it and it's just another example of how sometimes you may not like certain ingredients but in certain formulations they work out okay for you. So there you have it and that's my review on the COSRX Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. I hope that you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you in day four of my sunscreen series. I'll see you very soon. Bye.